Oh, I'm doubling up the audio. Why am I doing that? Every time. Every time I close my eyes. And it's the same. It never ends. It never begins. And it never ends. Um, I don't know, I'm just rambling. Uh, hello to everyone. Today is the 28th of June, 2021. It would be the last stream before the financial year closes in Australia. So if you've got some tax related items, uh, now's the time to commit to filing those tax related items. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it on that front. Uh, today is a somewhat morbid, but not morbid, somber, uh, stream of a variety because, uh, lots of things going on in the world, but, uh, the big time Tommy's life lesson of the day is to always find, find something constructive, find something that you can do and know who you can talk to when it comes to things that do bother you or get in the way of what you feel, you know, is correct. Um, I've got a story of uh, kind of annoying aspects of, uh, of the world around, but how about let's jump into the game and then I'll get into that. So uh, today's game of the game is... Uh, am I going to turn off the... Uh, overlay just before I switch to this. Uh, on screen display, turn off the notifications. There we go. Here I go, so let's switch on over to... Oh. Come on, there we go. Hey, so uh, this is a game that I remember playing for the channel back in uh, late 2016 and then I stopped. I'd never finished it. I never, I, this was alongside Legend of Heroes. I was just like, I'm gonna play through this game and uh, try and do a bit of a follow-up to me doing Pokemon Blue. And then I kind of stopped at some point. Um, and I'd say it was mostly just because I felt like making these videos and I, honestly I was making the same quantity of content uh, that I am now, but I put in way more effort into this. Legend of Heroes definitely took uh, some work out of me. Uh, but this is Pokemon Trademark Gold version, released in 2000 for the Nintendo Game Boy uh, slash Game Boy Color. It supports Game Boy Color features, and it's a good fun game when you're playing on the Game Boy Color. But you can play it on the original Game Boy for some reason. You can be that kind of guy. Uh, I, I forgot. So I, um, I still have my save from the Let's Play, but, uh, and I'm not, I'm not, like, actually deleting the save. I've got to store it somewhere else. But we're going to start from scratch. We're going to try and fix it from a new... Dude, you woke me up. Can you check the clock? What's the time of day? Uh, the other thing I realized as well is that I'm going to be eternally playing this game at... Nighttime, like I, I realize if I'm going to be playing this weekly at 8:30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, I love this night. No wonder it's so dark. Uh, I'm always going to be playing this game at nighttime, and that's going to be kind of interesting to to play this. Um, so why did I never finish it? Yeah, I think it was just the time effort. I decided to, like just put it down for a bit, just kind of like you know not rethink life decisions, because that sounds excessive, but um, definitely, you know, reprioritize some things. And in doing so, I managed to do tremendously well in my last two years of my uni degree, and I decided to just keep going on that. Uh, but with the whole work from home uh, business of the now, my Monday, or my evenings are pretty free in almost everything I do. Uh, so, let's go on. Also, me from five years ago, I have forgotten completely what I've named everything. Except, I do remember I named my Zubat Babat. <laughs> I remember that. Am I gonna keep the same kind of playthrough that I had before? I don't know. I think I'll take it as I go. Um, I've got Bulbapedia open just to kind of remind me of things as I go along, but I don't particularly have 
um, uh, a key plan how I'm going to play this game. So the best thing I'm going to do is kind of just try and show off as much as I know of. And I feel like that's kind of it. I don't think I can really do too much more on the fly. That being said, this game is great fun. Um, so the history of this game uh, for me is that I was four and a half years old when this game came out. And oh, you, you got to remember what day of the week it is. Oh, and I'm always going to be playing on Monday as well. So I'm not going to be... Oh, wait, it's not Daylight Savings Time. Sorry. You gotta watch out on that one. Although, it'd be incredibly easy to change the clock. Do you know how to use the phone? I'll read the instructions. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I was about four and a half years old. I had... My mum was absolutely gutsy and thought I could understand English enough to play Pokemon on the original Game Boy, but I... Actually, I think the colour was already out by then, so I had only played things on a colour. And I knew that there were some games that were like... You know... There were some games that I couldn't read, and then there were some games that I could play, but... This game's great fun. Um, did your mom get it for you? I'm glad there's some things that I remember saying way back when. Um, but, yeah, no, so, and then... Yeah, I played the original. Uh, the original was fine. It had its quirks. You could definitely notice some things, like how come my Charizard always crits when he uses Slash, and that's just because the way they calculated things was not very, not very, you know, robust in that game. Uh, but then Pokemon Gold came out when I was four and a half, and I immediately was wowed. I was like, this whole thing's in color, there's so many Pokemon in this game, there's, uh, it works. Like, there's not a lot of, like, weird things that actually happen uh, in the game compared to something else. We're still choosing Chikorita. Still choosing Chiki. I think that's a great Pokemon too. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, like, I just, I played this game to death. It absolutely, like, engrossed me how much, you know, how much more stuff was in this game. And, uh, Chiki. I got a mail. I don't know if I had mail last time. <laughs> we'll see. You gotta go to Cherry Grove. If your Pokemon's hurt, you gotta go to this machine, which... It's a bit of a fun point in these games when they tell you to go to that machine, only to then, you know, you go to a Pokemon Center, and then you talk to someone and they just do the machine for you. This guy comes up to you and he just gives you this wonderful potion, which helps in the grand scheme of running to the next place. So, there is that. Um, other than that, uh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. So there is going to be a couple of things that I'm not going to be able to benefit from because I am playing this game constantly at 8.30pm on, on uh, Monday. <laughs> That's the fun part about this game is that, yeah, the, the fact that it's got a, a day-night cycle and also the day of the week makes it really interesting to just, like, play through because... A lot of people are going to have drastically different experiences with this game just because of when they play. And I think that's, like, that that is the most amazing part about Pokemon. And I think that this game captures that so well. I, I'm going a mile a minute on ideas, but that's the part that's, like, really, like, nailed in my head right now, just, just coming up to it, is that I'm going to play this game so differently to how I usually play it because I'm playing it at such a different time and I'm forcing myself to play it at a different time. And then not only that, but even though you've got people playing Pokemon Silver, they're going to have different Pokemon uh, appear in certain places. Um, you're going to have, um, you know, the time of day affecting things. You're just going to have the kinds of encounters that they come across be different. And I don't really think that there's any, you know, there's no wrong way to play Pokemon. I think that's, that's probably the most surprisingly, like, subtle but amazing part about this game. It's just that it encourages people to play the game in such different ways all the time. So me playing on my Let's Play where I played in the middle of the day, it's like, oh, I would say you'd find 55% chance of finding Pidgey and 40% chance of Sentret and then a 5% chance of uh, Rattata or Rattata. Is it Rattata? I don't know. Um, but now it's 85% Hootoot and 15% Rattata. I have to double guess on that one. And it's like, yeah, like, there's two Pokemon that I can't show off right now. 
Um, that being said, I mean, for the purpose of a stream, playing it at this time, I don't know if I can necessarily show off everything because I'm doing it at the stream time, but there's nothing in this game that requires you to play it at very specific times of the day, um, and I think yeah, it's fine enough to do. Let's do a run through of the game and let's just have, have fun while we do it. Because Pokemon, uh, it gives and it takes. There's a lot of wild stuff that can happen in your run of Pokemon. Um, so for those who have never played Pokemon, I feel like most people have played Pokemon or understand the idea. It's a standard, very standard turn-based RPG where you simply have your four moves that your Pokemon can use and you fight monsters, you level them up, and then the gameplay loop involves uh, fighting trainers, so the more specific lineups of Pokemon that you're fighting. And then you've got the, uh, the grass, your wild Pokemon, so these are the more random encounters that you come across. But you can catch these Pokemon, we'll get to that much later, but the whole point is that all the monsters that are being used against you, you can use against them. And that's, that's the genius of Dragon Quest V, which was later refined so much better for Pokemon and then, as in my opinion, so much better for this game. Uh, So, now Chicky Chicky, Chicky's come out here with a, with a berry, and the berry uh, heals uh, you for 10 HP, um, and uh, your Pokemon uses it when they drop below half health, and they use it automatically. Uh, traditionally, items have to be used uh, at the beginning, or as your turn, but uh, they don't necessarily have to. Um, so yeah, it's for data. I'm finding these guys just because getting a bit of a level leg up uh, gives you a, an easier time in a moment. You can run past most of these enemies since uh, the Rattatas can only be up to level 4. That's your that's your worst bet. And then uh, running away is just based on your Pokemon speed versus their speed. Um, that can lead to some fun encounters depending on what the speed stats of your Pokemon actually are. I'm waiting for a Pokemon that appeared only in the morning. You can pick up a berry from here as well. This resets every day, I believe. And then, uh, yeah, just a uh, hop, skip, and a jump away, and I've reached Goldenrod City. You're a rookie trainer, I can tell. That's okay, everyone's a rookie at some point. Yeah, sure, I can teach you some things. And this guy shows you around, and he tells you the main mechanics of the city. Mostly that there is always a Poke Center. Uh, that's where you heal for free, and your Poke Mart. That's where you specifically buy Pokeballs, but really anything can be there. Uh, this guy also tells you that you should go that way if you want to go to Route 30. And this is the sea. As you can see, some Pokemon are only found in water. And that, you just spot a guy there and you're like, oh, what? <laughs> and then I am just not going to... <laughs> I'm just going to leave, but I have this map card. Uh, so as an improvement over the, the original game, um... I find that inventory management was rather picky in the original game. Uh, this game does a lot better of a job, uh, particularly your bags, uh, walls off, pokeballs, key items, and TMs, HMs. So I believe you can still only hold 20 items, but balls, key items, and TM, HMs, there's no limit because there's only a predetermined number of, well, balls, like, uh, like individual items have a limit, I guess, but, uh, you're not worried about, you know, your lift key taking up your inventory space, because the more key items you got in that first game, you know, impossible. On top of that, uh, you've got the Poke Gear, which substitutes a handful of items that traditionally would be key items, such as the map, so that's cool. Uh, let's go for a heal. Um, might as well, you know. Uh, so in the Pokemon Center, you can always go up to a person and you can get healing, so that's good fun. Uh, that's it, basically. You just, you just heal like that. Uh, you know one thing I love about, uh, these older Pokemon games as well? Like, this game, you just, you go. You just, you're just out of the gate. You don't have to worry about, like, anything. The game just throws you in and just goes, like, yeah, you're not gonna fight enemies. You're just gonna fight, like, wild Pokemon. Like, that's all you gotta figure. That's all you gotta learn when you start off. It gives you an opportunity to learn how your Pokemon levels. It gives you an opportunity to learn what moves actually attack and which ones don't. Because, again, uh... I don't believe the game particularly gives you a description of the moves. Nah, no, it doesn't really. 
Uh, but it at least lets you play around with things. But it's like, you know, first gen's a little bit mean, because you get your starter, and then your opponent just decides to beat you up. Like... So at least you got the opportunity to go ahead. Thank you, Chicky Chicky. Uh, there's a few points of interest on the way, particularly, uh, there's a fruit berry tree, again. It's always good just to get these free items as well. Uh, at least early game. Late game, it's a bit, eh. This guy also gives you another one for some reason. He really wants you to have these berries, apparently. Like, sure. Ah! The other fun part about this game, and I always love this just on an audio kind of level, the cries, like, I, it, it, the, the, t the term cries, I feel like is a weird translation that they've just casually kept, but I just love these, like, these chip, you know, noises that they make, and that's like, oh, that's what the Pokemon sounds like, and I just realized I'm gonna maybe get an eyelet. oh my gosh. What is happening here, by the way? Because String Shot lowers my speed. It doesn't cause me to miss that often. Uh, so for reference, me being poisoned means I take damage every four steps. I'm not going to make it that much. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's hilarious. That is hilarious. Cool. Cool. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I ran out of usable Pokemon. Uh, if you get poisoned, you lose damage every turn in battle, and then you also take one damage for every four steps you do. And I conveniently had just enough steps to die before I hit the Pokemon Center. Um, and, uh, if you die... I don't know what you do if you die outside a battle like that, apart from just go back to the Pokemon Center. What is this? Tackle should have a 95% accuracy of hitting. And I've missed quite a number of times now. So, you don't get too many options to, to use for attacks straight up, but you'll definitely get more as you go throughout the game, so that's alright. Uh, the Pokemon you can find in this route are mostly... Is it mostly Hootoot? I'm playing gold, so I wouldn't find a Hootoot, actually. I'd find... There's a bit of Hootoot, there's... Rotata, and Spinneret. That's that's my one, and... At least at this time of day. Spinneret is the bane of my existence. As well as grass. I'm having some rather unfortunate, like, early grasses, you know? Oh well. Uh... But no, yeah, like, this game is really good fun. I really enjoy it. Yeah. Sick it to him. Almost there at the end. Almost there. Ah, uh, so, uh... Today's uh, iffy news uh, comes at the uh, request of uh, Sony Music Entertainment Japan. Now, uh, for those who were watching stuff on my channel, I, I'm actually going to ignore this spinner for the moment. Uh, for those of you who are watching my channel, and who knows, maybe this is still current, maybe it's actually been restored, um, I'll just say that uh, there should be an Earthbound Part 2 video on my YouTube channel. But there isn't, and that's because Sony Music Entertainment Japan, like uh, for the first video, uh, filed a automatic copyright claim on the video because it uses background audio of the game that matches their Earthbound published albums. Uh, now, I looked it up, those albums were released at around the time of the game. You could say, okay, it's, it's at least been a reasonably held copyright there. But the music is... I think from from what I can tell, exactly the same as the music in the game. And not the other way around. As in, it's using the game's chip tune music, and it's published that on CD, and therefore it's matching based on that. 
Uh, who calls himself Mr. Pokemon, by the way? That's a very bizarre name. Mr. Pocket Monster, like... That's an innuendo. Someone in the translation loved that one. Uh, and then you also have this Professor Oak guy who's like, Hey, just have, a, have this latest version of this Pokédex. Like, you don't even know how to catch things, and this guy's already telling you to have a fun time, you know, collecting things. And then he just goes for a radio show. But I like how he's not just a guy who stands in the lab. He at least has, like, something that he does. I also have no idea if this is like, is this like cables, like, all over the ground? Is that what that's supposed to be? That texture comes up in a lot of places. Um, and then you get a phone call where Professor Elm goes, Ah, it's a disaster, it's just terrible, what should I do? Oh no, please get back here now. And he hangs up, and that's it. <laughs> so you're like, okay. And then it's your, your goal to walk all the way back. I'm pretty sure actually there's a hidden item there, yeah, yeah. I remember that one. That was a fun one. Uh, so yeah, so Sony Music Entertainment Japan, uh, has, uh, had filed a claim on the video because some of the background music of Earthbound matched their album audio. Now, I filed a, um, a counterclaim going, hey yo, like, no, I mean, I, I have the feeling that they don't really have the rights to this performance of the music. Because that, that's the key thing, is that there's, that's not the original publication of the music. It's not the exclusive publication of the music, because I'm pretty sure Nintendo didn't have to go to Sony Music to go, Hey, can we re-release Earthbound in 2014? 2015? I don't know when they re-released it on the Wii U, but... Like, they... Like, if Sony legitimately owns the composition of the music, then Nintendo would have to be asking them for, for that kind of stuff. I don't... I think Sony would go without a mention in the credits if that was the case. Like, if they're not mentioned in the game's credits, I feel like the licensing never happened. Uh, now that's pure speculation on my end, but I... That's not the case I went off. I went off the case of, well, I'm, you know, like, yes, I am playing through a game and therefore it has the background music, but I am providing a running commentary and a critique of the game. I'd say it falls under, you know, fair use. Uh, for the first part, I was like, oh, well, maybe, maybe it just wasn't, you know, critique -y enough. So for the second stream, I made sure to really mention the music and mention all the explicit techniques. For example, if I was to talk about this music, I would say I love this, uh, you know, like, almost arpeggiotic bass line. It's not quite arpeggiotic, but it's rather unrelenting in that one. And then you've got two voices of the main melody in both ears, and that's actually a real interesting thing with uh, this game's music, is that it's all presented in stereo. Uh, which is an experience I think most people playing on the Game Boy don't experience, but then most people playing on... Uh, on a... Emulators are definitely gonna tell, um, or anyone who plugs it in. I have a good Pokemon too, I'll show you what I mean! Uh, this is the part where I mildly regret not healing, but honestly, it's not too bad. So you get four, you, you fight this question mark guy, he sends out Cyndaquil, you're like, oh, that's one of the Pokemon that was at, on the bench at the beginning. Uh, the trick is just to use Growl. Uh, I like using it twice. Now he's gonna double it up by using Leer, so I just say use Growl again. I don't know. Depending on who you pick as well, because you can, of course, pick Cyndaquil, or you can pick the Totodile that will not appear in this entire playthrough. Um, Leer drops your defense, Growl drops their attack. So it's kind of balancing out like that. Uh, Razor Leaf is interesting, because it's like, oh, it's, it's grass type, so I get uh, one and a half times more damage based on it, but then he's fire type and I lose 50% at the end of the damage, and so I'm running the numbers in my head, and I think this ends up being slightly over, and never mind also, it's more accurate and has the side effect of also critting more often. So, I'm just gonna commit to it. It critted, so you know it. Slightly worked out. Alright, so, uh, back to copyright. So, yeah, I, I said, like, this is well under fair use in my eyes. I feel like the fact that I'm critiquing the musical content explicitly, um, and on top of that, just, you know, it's a transformative playthrough of a game, so it's not like the game's copyright material is necessarily being, you know, like... How do I say it in a way that, like, doesn't sound like I'm just being very careless, but... You know what I mean, like, I... There's a certain degree of, like, how, how much 
what proportion of the copyrighted material you're sharing. And in the context of the music, like I'd say the entire thing because it's the background music, but in terms of the game, I'm like, well, it's a part of the game, it's a part of that video. And ultimately, you know, one person plays with the game very differently to me. So I was like, well, there's that. Uh, there's the nature of the work, particularly, you know, I don't mind not monetizing these videos. I, I find that, you know, I'm monetizing because of my own content, and I wouldn't necessarily say that... Yeah, you know, it's, it's tough on that one, but I, I also only make, like, you know, a handful of views on these videos, so I don't think there's anything, you know, any hard reason to monetize it. And then, of course, this is published work, but it's also a video game, so it's it's a different experience playing it to, um, to watching it, especially watching someone else play it, um, and not just, sorry, watching someone else talk about them playing it and not just you watching a playthrough of the game. What? You battled a trainer just like that? Did you get his name? And then you can just go like, uh... Ah, uh, what do you what do you call him? Didn't I call him, like, Fierce or something? Oh, hold on. I'm actually looking up, like, what I... I really want to know what I called him on my on my Let's Play of this. I type being there Pokemon Gold and I get my Warrior Land 4 video. Duck, duck, go! Come on, man. Uh, being that Pokemon Gold. Wow, I can I can't even find my own Pokemon Gold Let's Play on on YouTube. That's crazy. I found my stream alert. Now that's a new one. Uh, here we go. So what's this? I think it was yeah, part two. I, I went across. What did I call him? Oh, I went canonic and called him Silver. Ah, psh. I don't know. I'll call what's a what's a red name? Let's let's call him Neville. With I've got yeah. Because it's got evil in the name. I'm sorry to people who are legitimately called Neville. <laughs> but, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a mildly subtle pun. The worst part as well is that, like... I mean, I, it, this game's got that, like, wonderful sequel material of just, like, linking so many aspects of the first game. So, like, this, this villain guy who's canonically called Silver, um has, like, I believe he is the son of Giovanni? Is that the, the canon? And Giovanni's like the crime lord of Team Rocket. Like, that's an amazing, like, linkage that makes not so much sense, because he still steals a Pokemon, but, you know, it describes his motives in such an easy way, because you don't have to, like, explain anything about how, how, uh, the game works. You just, or how, how this guy's personality is. You just kind of go, boom, there you go. So, uh, anyway, this guy gives you Pokeballs, which is good fun, because that means that we can finally start, uh, the main run of the game. Also, incredibly important, you gotta go to your home, you gotta tell your mum, Hi, I'm going on an adventure. That's a cute Pokemon, where'd you get it? So you're leaving home. Sure, what can I do for you? I know, I'll save money for you. On a long journey, money's important. You want me to save your money? No! Be careful. So, what the mum does is that she'll, sh if you said yes, she would start taking some of the money that you earned, but then she'd use it to buy an item, and she'd always spend way more than she really, like, has to, I believe. And I'm gonna mildly look this up right now, but I'm very certain... Uh, the one thing is that sometimes she does get an item that decorates your room. Um, you can switch this on the phone, so that is nice. You do have that. Other than that, this guy gives you a tutorial for how to, um... How to catch a Pokemon. You can actually tell him to bugger off. Which is so good. So, uh, I don't know what exactly I would want to catch. Because I know you can, I know you can get Hootoot, but Hootoot ain't necessarily the best. Hootoot's pretty, uh, pretty average in my eyes, um, and, uh, my issue with Hootoot is that he doesn't learn a lot of great moves. Like, he's... He's more bulky, I think. I think he's more bulky than, you know, 
and then being like a full-on sweeper, but then evolves into Noctowl, and then it's like, then what do you do? Like, it just kind of takes takes hits. So I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily count on that. Uh, you've also got Rotata, and Rotata's much more like a sweeper kind of Pokemon. In fact, there's the classic strat of uh, the Rotata that then uses um, Reversal when it's on low health, and then Quick Attack, like. Classic strat of just like, who cares? Uh, I'm gonna leave it there, but I'm curious whether Spinarak is actually gonna be okay. I'm just gonna open them up on, on my end as well, and just kinda gauge whether it's worthwhile getting them. Uh, so anyway, um... Uh... Sony said, no, like, your your video falls under, like, it's, it's under copyright, and so the counter claim was denied. Now, that happened in both videos, both the first one and the second one. Because I felt the case in the second video was so much more stronger, I decided to go ahead and go with a full-on appeal. And I said, hey, no, like, you're definitely in the wrong. The appeal specifically gets you to fill up fields on why your video falls under fair use, and not just you saying the copyright claim is invalid, like, as a statement. Uh, about a day later, the video was... Well, for reference as well, the, the video was restricted in all regions except Japan. So I was really motivated to not just, like, let it eat the, the, the revenue. Which, by the way, I hate how they'll run ads on my video in formats that I don't like. Like, there's... I, I, I specifically do the, the banner at the bottom, sidebar, and there's one other one. But never, never video ads. I never do video ads. If you watch any of my videos and there's video ads, I don't make money off it. Someone has put ads on my video. It's dumb. I don't like it. And I can't do anything about it, which is really annoying. Um, well, I can. If, if I can really try and argue that all of these videos don't violate you know, copyright, which... Uh, I mean, some of my older stuff, you never know. Uh, for reference as well, you can't go up in this direction initially because two people are having a Pokemon battle. Uh, but then... When you come back after doing all that stuff at the beginning, you have to do the Pokemon battle. So there is that. This music's a jam. Youngster Joey right here. Gives you that Rattata. Let's go, Chicky. I feel like Razor Leaf is just an absolute beast move. I'm probably going to be rather overleveled right now. Oh, actually, do I need to run in with a Hutu? I think there's an option for me. I think I've got an option. I've got an option. Alright. Uh... So, yeah, so the videos were blocked in all regions, except for Japan. And I was like, well, I, you know, no one's gonna watch my videos. Because they're only in Japan, and as YouTube says, it's like, Japan's 2% of my watch time, like, as an audience. So, I, I'm, I'm filing a counter-appeal. Uh, the appeal uh, resulted in uh, my very first copyright takedown strike on my channel. I'm surprised I have gotten this far, and this is the first proper strike I've gotten. There's been claims up the wazoo, I've even had a community guideline strike for uh, content containing rather wrought things against miners. Uh, that was on one of my stream videos at the beginning of the year, and that one I, like, legit was like, yo, like, no, not at all. And that one got reversed rather easily, actually, but, uh, but never an actual takedown. Uh, so this is a full takedown. Um, fortunately, as under the YouTube Partner Program, um, apparently Razor Leaf does not hit 100% of the time. Uh, what is happening? What the heck? Why, why did I miss Razor Leaf twice in a row? What's the odds on that one? Isn't it like 5% chance to miss? Okay. Very bizarre, but sure. Um... Sure, okay. Hi there. Uh, you want to talk to some of these people as well, because I'm very certain that, like, some of them will call you. You only have so many spots in your phone, so ultimately, like, it doesn't matter whether you know, I talk to every single person, because I feel like there's going to be some that are just like, oh, okay. Uh, but having these people in for a rematch actually means that you get to fight stronger Pokemon later on, which is actually really good fun. I love this one person just baits you, that like, oh, like, I don't fight. 
Uh, so, in doing so, I was like, oh, okay. For reference as well, um, I had messaged YouTube's, uh, Twitter support, uh, to try and go, hey, like, someone's issued a claim on my video. I think they're not correct in their assessment of my video. Whatever it is, what can I do? And they are just like, ah, let's file the appeal. Like, you can file the appeal and, like, you know, if you believe you're in the right, and then, yeah, I get the takedown request, so... I'm not a big fan of that. Um, on top of that, I found that YouTube has uh, something called a public record for uh, copyright claims on videos. They... that's their terminology, by the way. They call it a public record. And in that public record contains the name... Hold on, I actually want to get the... Uh... I want to get the very specific terms that they use, because I want to read this out. YouTube... There we go. Just saved myself 20 bucks. Did you win a bet? <laughs> that I wouldn't talk about copyright claims? I feel like I kind of have to, because I think some people are probably wondering why I'm playing Pokemon and not Earthbound. Um... Here we go, so... Uh, yeah, it's, it's got this, and I'm, I'm gonna read this out explicitly. So it says, Certain personal information is required when you submit a copyright takedown request through our web form. Uh, and it says, How is your information used? If a video is removed for copyright infringement, the name of the copyright owner will be visible on YouTube in place of the video. If you give us a valid legal alternative, such as the name of a company or an authorized representative, we'll review it and apply it if appropriate. The copyright owner name that you enter will become part of the public record of your request. And then it says learn more about the public record of your takedown request, which leads into a little later. It also says your full name is required to complete a takedown request. It may be shared with the uploader of the video removed for copyright infringement. Note that one. It may be shared with the uploader. So, okay. So, now, the name of the copyright owner is pretty obvious, because whenever you get a takedown of a video, and if you've ever seen a video being taken down, there's always the company name before I ever took that. There's also the primary email address from your takedown request may be shared with the uploader of the video removed for copyright infringement. The uploader might get in touch with you to resolve their copyright strike. Okay. 46. Cool. Nice. And then the last one, your physical address and phone number will remain confidential unless re part, sorry, unless requested as part of a lawsuit. If YouTube is required to share any information, we'll notify you before doing so. Now, everything in that so far is all right, except for the legal name of the person. I have not received a legal name of whoever did the takedown request, but, you know, I've got their company name and they have properly given me their copyright uh, email address, of which they aren't responding, which is great. I know. There's not, what's the point in giving me an email address if, like, I can't contact anyone from, with it? YouTube should legitimately, like, if, if people do that, like, if they don't respond to your email, just, like, Bugger off with the request. I don't, I don't care. Oh, I'm mildly tempted to use a Geodude. I know I can't evolve him, but I'm mildly tempted to. Nah, nah. We'll skip the Geodude for the moment because I, I do want a Zubat. Zubat's my my jam. I always go for a Zubat because he's absolutely beast in this game. Um, I love this cave as well because like I obviously have no idea where I'm going, but you can't even continue through this cave as well. By the way, uh, now. Let me read out this next part, directly underneath that. The uploader of the infringing video can request a copy of your takedown request. The info shown in this public record includes name of copyright owner, primary email address, secondary email address, an optional field in the web form, your full legal name, your description of the allegedly infringing work, and your responses to YouTube's request for more information. YouTube will request more information if your initial takedown request is incomplete or appears invalid. I'm reading this going, well, I'm the uploader of the infringing video, apparently. I'm going to request a copy of the takedown request, and I want to get the name of the copyright owner, the primary email address, uh, the full legal name, the description of the allegedly infringing work, and any responses to YouTube. That's, like, that seems really clear-cut that that's YouTube's policy on that one. Uh, I feel like if I use any attack, I'm going to absolutely overkill this. And this is one problem I have with this early game, is that, like, your starter is so good before you can really, like, get anything else. I am a little bummed about that one. Alright, 
So, I ask the Twitter support, can I get this? And the Twitter support tells me, and I'm, I'm going to Twitter to get their explicit words on this one, they tell me, uh, we can't share the personal info you're asking, and we can't mediate between disputes like this. You can reach out to the other party via the email address we've previously shared. Uh, here's more information. You can also submit a counter notification. So, like, okay, I've done the counter notification now. That's the last thing I can do, because apparently if your counter notification fails, your video is, like, in a pure dead space, where you have to go through the person. You have to go through, you know, Sony Music Entertainment in this example, and get them to manually take the video, to get the video back online. Me, as an uploader to YouTube, have absolutely no means to get this person, if they are misusing their copyright, you know, claim, I have no means of getting them to, like, not... Sorry, I, I have no means of correcting this. Which is awfully aggravating. Uh, so the only thing I can say, and for reference on this counter notification as well, is that this request does go through YouTube, so I don't know what he means about not mediating, because he legitimately looks... Whoever's, whoever's looking at my counter notification legitimately looks at... <laughs> the video, and looks at the claim, and comes to their own assessment whether it's at least a valid claim for the other person to see. Uh, I don't think there's any, like, harm to the channel if, like, that one... I gotta call Babat. Babat's a, a girl as well, so good on Babat. I'm going to make my way forward and ignore the bug trainer down there, because that bug trainer always, always gets me. Um... So, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bummed about that one. Apparently, uh, once YouTube approves it, uh, there is 10 days for uh, Sony Music Entertainment to respond to that. Uh, and then if they don't, I think the video comes back up. But, I don't know, knowing, knowing what's, what's happened so far, this feels very ominous. Uh, on top of that, I messaged YouTube through the... Um, through the, the YouTube support channel. And uh, let me just pull that one up on my end. Uh, so they said, and I wanna see if I can, see if I can pull that up on my end, there we go. Uh, so, hello, I am talking to a James person on this one. Uh, now this James person actually was like a good help. I didn't quite get the outcome I wanted, but like they were very clear to the point and didn't like reiterate you know, support docs, which I think is fine. So I gave them the name of the video, and they said, uh, upon the checking the system, I can only provide you with the email address of the claimant on your video, but you can see more information by clicking on this. I'm like, yeah, sure. Uh, and then I said, there's no other information such as their description of the affected video available to share. Actually, you may see that on your end uh, by following the steps I provided. I'm sorry, I wish I could share more with you. Unfortunately, we can only provide the email address of the claimant. Thank you for understanding. I'd be happy to discuss how you can resolve the copyright strike. And I'm like, yeah, I've done that. Uh, have you tried sending a counter notification? Yeah, I've already done that. And then I said, is there an available reason why there's no other information available? The support documentation seems to indicate that this is a quote, public record that can be requested. And he goes, that is correct. Thanks for checking that. I'm sorry I don't have the capability to see the those information on our end, but if it's okay with you, I can check to our internal team about this matter, but we may need to continue this conversation to email. And then he goes, like, at the end, I will send the follow-up to the admin email of the channel, so that. Uh, and then that follow-up basically said, uh, let me scroll again, uh, I reached out to our internal team regarding your issue about the claimant's information on your video, and here's some information as per an, our internal team. We can only give the claimant's email address because it is the only available information on our end. However, they advise that you should contact directly to our copyright team about this matter. So... that's where I'm currently at. This... <laughs> apparently... the direct contacts that I... I get through YouTube, and I understand the Twitter support's always a... a tricky one, because it's like... How deep can Twitter support truly get? Who knows? But it's quite interesting that they claim they can only see the email address. Like, it's not that they are not allowed to share the email address. 
is that they don't know anything beyond the email address of who filed the claim. And the video, I guess. They know the video, because I told them the video. So, like, it's really bizarre on my end. Like, not, I'm not saying that, like, oh, you know, I don't understand w how a big company like Sony manages to do this, but it's like, why is this information, like, I do not see what is confidential about the reasons why a video breaches copyright. We got a weed all. We got weed all. Uh, I'm not gonna be able. Are you gonna catch Suda Wudo? I am probably gonna catch Suda Wudo. Really? I should. I should be using Babat. I don't know why I'm not. The worst part is that like Babat's got um, leech life. So. This is going to be the slowest move in the world. Uh... So, I'm going to send him out just because he needs experience. And now's the only time to really get it. And I'm going to be slow anyway, so... But yeah, I, I hope you all uh, wait, bear with me when it comes to this copyright, you know, related stuff. Because I feel like there's two things that are inevitable in life. Death and... YouTubers talking about how their videos got copyright claimed or demonetized or all that stuff. I'm, I've actually been rather fortunate not being hit by demonetization that hard uh, for content. Um, just because I, I try to keep it straight and I try to keep it not kid friendly, but um, we'll just say PG. Like, Uh, I don't know, not, not hit anything too controversial, but trouble with YouTube copyright is that it's it's a bizarre system because you only make YouTube videos because you really enjoy making these kinds of videos and producing this content. YouTube is a really good platform at exposing your videos to the world because I don't know any any other sorry any other video site that people browse. You might be able to go tangential off, like, other sites. Um, but honestly, like, if someone's watching videos, it's most likely on YouTube. There just does not seem to be an alternative to music. So, keep saying music. It's a video consumption. So you have to go through it. I understand YouTube's a massive site, and therefore, like, a lot of things have to be automated. But on the other hand, it's like... If there's ever problems with the usage of these automatic systems, then really needs to be a way for people to, you know, manually get around it. And on the one hand, I'm concerned that, like, I feel like I'm in this weird middle ground where, like, I've technically got, like, some access to some internal YouTube programs because I am on that partner program, but honestly, like, I don't know what to really do. Like, you know, if this doesn't work... Uh, f for reference as well, uh, the copyright... Sorry, the, the... Yeah, the copyright strike expires in 90 days from that strike. So, while... So, one, the video is still down after they've issued a strike. And no matter what I do, I, like, I can't put it back up. And I would rather not risk editing it. Uh, just to try and get around it. Because it's like, yeah, I mean, if they struck the video... Let's try and get the video back. Let's not put something in its place. Um... The chicky is hurt by poison. Uh... But... It's... It's a toughie. It's a toughie. What do you... What do you do? This is technically uh, a, a legal matter, like... Uh... <laughs> and... For reference, this whole thing is, uh... Me talking from my point of view and should not be any uh, strongly holding legal statements. This is purely just the things that I have seen and experienced, but uh, from what I believe, when I filed the original appeal, uh, it said uh, you must, like, be warned of being... I, I forget the terminology, but they, they said something about, like, don't, like, get caught for perjury, which... Sounds like a scary word, and then you're just like, well, it, it just means intentional lying. If you're, if you're, like, intentionally, you know, misrepresenting your video, I can understand why a copyright person might get really mad at you on that one, but, you know, I... 
honestly believe my video was made at least in, in good faith and honestly how many views is it getting like really they should <laughs> they shouldn't be spending this much time on it I also find the other weird case is that like I found specifically like three prominent you know youtubers who let's played earthbound in 2018 in particular and went through the very specific song that uh i was calling out on and i said like how come they're still up like i don't quite get it apparently earthbound music as well has been getting hit like over the past few months really hard so who knows but man this is something i'll keep you guys updated with but Honestly, I can't say much more because it's been a very one-sided affair. It's been me talking to YouTube and then going, and cool, like, yeah, YouTube, YouTube, one hundred percent, like, you know, are the the intermediates. They sh they should not, you know, like, I don't believe the in any fault on this one because it's just like, well, I mean, the support wasn't the Twitter support wasn't that helpful, but that's it. It's just the Twitter support's not that helpful. Name a Twitter support that has been helpful. NBNCO. There you go. Good on you guys. You messaged me when I didn't even want to message you. And <laughs> like, sure, I guess. That's the best one. Has Young said Joey really? What has he got? How are your Pokemon doing? My Radithar has been really energetic. It's a handful. Play Mother 3 instead. Sony doesn't have the music from that one. Do they not have the music from that one? Because they published Mother 1 and 2. So they've got that. not a particularly great way to level up, uh, Babat right now, while he's, like, this low level. I also just hit B just then. Not, not having a happy time on the inside. Oh, well. So, anyways, that's, that's that. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, if YouTube can respond soon... Uh, to the, the counter appeal, the counter claim, uh, then I should be able to wing the 10 days, not by the next stream, but by the stream after. We'll have a hard answer by then. Um, and, uh, we'll see how we go from there. I guess there's a degree of, like, you know, how much do you care? And honestly, that 90 days, like, I think it's, it's 86 days now. So give me, give me 14 weeks and it'll be mostly 15 weeks and it'll be gone. 15 weeks? Yeah. But, I don't know, I think that's a standard that should be set. Um, and I honestly believe that what is being done here is... That's the third time I've been poisoned! Like, off, off just a regular super effective. I'm very certain the rate is not... The rate of being poisoned is not based on anything. It's just... It's just whatever. Okay, so... Anyways, uh... Now, if Nintendo wants to grow me for not properly, you know... Critiquing and reviewing Pokemon. Let me, let me keep going on about some other things. Uh, this is the one mildly dull point in the game, uh, where... Um... You can either fight the gym, and you can fight these flying-type Pokémon, which will absolutely wreck uh, my team of two. One of a low-level Zubat and a Grass-type Pokémon that is weak to every single time they use Gust. Uh, there is alternatively uh, the Sprout Tower uh, to the side. Um, the Sprout Tower um, consists of trainers that only have Bell Sprouts until you get to one guy at the end who has like, two Hootoots, I think. I think that's it. Um... It's alright. Uh, I realize as well that I can't catch Bellsprout here. No, I can! Yes! Okay. Okay. We're good. <laughs> We're safe. Um... So, there's a couple of things you can do to get past that. First of all, the fact that you could catch Geodudes. Um... So... You can do that, and you got Geodude, and none of the, the flying-type Pokémon in the gym can do a thing about the Geodudes. But, 
The bell sprouts and the sprout tower definitely can. Um, so you're gonna have to play this on both angles. You're gonna have to have a, a Pokemon some flying type, which fortunately, you know, you've got Pidgey, uh, you've got Hoot Hoot. Don't really have much of another option, but you've at least got those two. And then as as it comes to rock types, so there's two types you can do. You can do the Geodude, or you can do the other cool strat, which is getting an Onix. And to get an Onix, we're gonna have to find a Bell Sprout in here and then do a trade. And I love this just kind of like early game uh, kind of trades concept that they've got set up because uh, I felt like the first game every single time I had a trade choice it was very awkwardly not good. Some of them you'd just get the Pokemon that you could get otherwise. Uh, in fact, a lot of them you could. Um, none of them felt like they were that contextually like helpful. I think. And here's this first one. It's like here's a really easy Pokemon to get a Bell Sprout. He's got an Onix. It's something you can't get right now. And it's so immediately, like, a, like appropriate for the gym. It's it's just a tremendously good trade deal that they offer to the player. And it's surprising that they don't even, you know, they don't have to tell you a word about it. It's just like, if you spot it in the building, you can go for it. And that's that's one subtle, subtle, subtle thing about this game, is that it doesn't, it doesn't really hold your hand and it doesn't really panic too hard. It's like, that's, that's it. It's also not the longest game as well, like... I, I'm taking a bit of my sweet time to get Babat uh, up to scratch. Um, I'm not gonna be spending that much time. I realize I don't... I've got one ball left, I think. That's a... that's a fun out of context, maybe. Uh... So yeah, so the, the last thing I'll, I'll just say about the copyright is, uh... If it's all settled... I will maybe do another Earthbound video. We'll, we'll, we'll continue. If this happens again, you know, what, what do you do? What do you do? Because because that's that's concern number number X over the horizon as well is what, what prevents this from happening again? Who knows? Uh, that was Brad's goal. Now, I think in my Let's Play I caught two of them, because I actually wanted to use one on my team. Uh... I don't particularly think why. I got my notes, actually. Don't I? Yeah, I... so I wrote this in like an Excel spreadsheet, and I just see, last updated, July 31st, 2016. And this is when I've written every single... Yeah, I had written every single Pokemon in the game. I had done this manually. Oh, that hurts. I had written every Pokemon that I had found up to that point. No, that's every... That's all 251. That is all 251. Wow. And then, uh... Yeah, oh, so now I've got my list of Pokemon data, and I wrote them in alphabetical order. Sorry, no, numerical order. Oh, my gosh. I'd linked them. I'd at least done that. I never broke down the end team that I'd go with. Very curious. Very curious. My notes went all the way up to the end of, um... Four gyms. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Maybe I'll share these at some point. This is like... This is crazy, like, old Blendo kind of style. This is like... When you... you... Yeah, because I, I tried I tried being too too much Chugga Conroy on my Pokemon Blue. And uh, some of the video production quality, I'd still say like, mm, I wish I could do it a little better than I did back then, but honestly, it wasn't too bad. I don't think I really hated how I attempted to do this Pokemon Gold. Uh, it's just that the style of preparing so far in advance, it doesn't get me as much. Because, like, I don't play this game over and over too much to really know every single part off the top of my head, like, I have to kind of, like, double guess, you know, Pokemon moves, and I have to double guess some Pokemon stats, and I gotta, like, you know, reference look up. If, if I had Bulbapedia open all the time, which I do at the moment, then I can answer these questions, but when it comes to answering it on the fly, I don't, and I kind of regret pretending that I, uh, that I could have when I did these Let's Plays, um, although for Pokemon Blue, like, uh, you, you can kind of cheese it after a while. 
You can kind of go, oh, okay, like that was it. I realized I could do the trade and then not have to have my Chikorita sitting out. Like, taking up all the experience. Because <laughs> Chikorita's, Chiki Chiki's already a level 11 now. It's kind of crazy. You don't need him to be that high level. Alright, let's do this trade. Ah. Uh... And only now is it one hour into the stream. Like, I feel like I've exhausted the topic. If you don't have the right gym badge, they will disobey you. So that's that's a, a key tip as well, is that uh, you can raise your own Pokemon, you can overlevel the heck your own Pokemon as much as you want, I think. Pretty sure. But if it's someone else's Pokemon, if it passes a certain limit, nice number for Bellsprout as well. If it passes a certain limit, then that uh, Pokemon will quite often not listen to you and just either run a random move, not attack, who knows, lots of things. Um, so that's how they prevent you from, you know, just importing Pokemon, or importing friends Pokemon. These trade Pokemon also abide by those rules, which is kind of interesting. Look at that little snake thing! I love these, like, trade sequences, though. Just classic, just, you know... I remember we'd make the, like, when I'd actually trade with people, like, we'd, I'd make the noises. I'd, I'd just, like, watch the cable itself and go, wow, the Pokemon's going in there. Like, never mind that the Pokemon probably, how many, how many bites does a Pokemon probably take up? Like, 30? Uh, he also comes with an item. You can take the item. It's a bit of berry. You don't really need it. You don't need it. Uh, he does, he's only level 3, he's very low, but he's got a... So, Onyx has a great defense, not that great special defense. Don't rely on it. And his health isn't, like, as high as, like, other Pokemon can be. So, be warned for anything that's a special uh, type. But he knows Tackle and Screech, and Screech is a remarkably good attack, um, which lowers your opponent's defense by two stages. So, it's like that Tail Whip, it's like Leer. But it's on steroids, and it's great. Uh, but... No, yeah. I, I think Onyx is just gonna be good fun. Again, problem with Onyx. How are you gonna level him up? Winging it really hard. And there's not, there's not really any better place to do it other than winging Sprout- Oh, I could wing Sprout Tower, couldn't I? How about I fight this Rattata? At least, Rocky can fight out here. Like, he can't fight in the... Well, yeah. No, because this defense is so ridiculous that this Rattata- Oh my gosh, missing tackle. This Rattata can't do that much damage, because he's, he's too bulky. He's too bulky. This attack's also not that bad as well, but... I don't know, I wouldn't rely on it. Uh, Onyx can evolve, but good luck doing it in a let's... in a emulator-based Let's Play. Or any Let's Play, for that matter. You need a friend to trade it. And, uh... That, that's always the quirk of Pokémon, is that, yeah, you can do these trade evolutions with a friend, but can you do it with yourself? Uh, well, actually... I think this specific emulator can do that, because it's, uh... I'm running us on a Gambat, which, uh, I definitely know supports link cabling. It's got its quirks, but it's, like, it's pretty there. It's good enough for Pokemon trades, so... Oh, and also, because it's someone else's Pokemon, they gain more experience. Uh, which actually is a godsend. Uh, but... You know, world's a crazy place right now, uh, so don't be- Okay, so now when there's a bell sprout, I'm like, okay, don't have this, because don't have Rocky out, because you know he's gonna just, like, kick in with a Vine Whip, and you know he's gonna absolutely get annihilated, but then you switch over to Babat, and suddenly, Babat tanks the Vine Whip, because it's, you know, weak against poison, weak against flying, and then you can use Leech Life, and you just suck the health back, and you're cheesing it really hard, but that's okay. He's got the whip. The miracle whip. 
Uh, but no, yeah, world's a crazy place, uh, to some extent. Um, so, keep your, keep your head in. Don't lose your head, is that the, the phrase? I don't know if that's necessarily, uh, helpful advice, but... Don't let, uh, worries get to you. Focus on what you enjoy, and realize that, you know, you got a voice, and that's, that's all it is. Not, that, that sounds so, so minor. I don't know how I'm phrasing it. You can talk to people, and people very often listen, and usually that makes everyone feel better, come to consensus. That's, that's huge. I have said that many times, I've realized, as well. Oh well. It's worth saying every week. And what better way to commune with others than to tell them that their favorite Pokemon is trash? Like, legit, Pokemon is a great game because you'll definitely run into a lot of people who have different favorite Pokemon, and different favorite Pokemon often, like, suck. Like, there's a lot of people with really, like, off-brand, like, favorite Pokemon. I feel like winging it. Um, so, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of buildings in here. I don't think there's particularly anything to... Oh, there is this. There is, um, one thing you can do. Uh, if you go down here? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So you can't go all the way down. The game prevents you from crossing too far down, uh, until you beat the gym. You don't have to beat Sprout Tower, I believe, but you are limited by HM. So this guy, yeah, this guy goes, have you gone to the Pokemon gym? You can attach your Pokemon yourself there. It's a rite of passage for all trainers. Wait up, what's the hurry? <laughs> have you gone to the Pokemon gym? <laughs> he, he prevents you from going down. It's rather obnoxious, but keeps you in line. Uh, you can also go to the Ruins of Alf, uh, which is another training place. I actually am curious if that's... I don't think it is better because I gotta fight unknowns and because whatever type they hit you with is random, I feel like the Onyx is not gonna particularly last. Uh, Sprout Tower has a really cool sprite here of like, is it the tower shifting? I think it is. And also those are stairs. I know, right? Um, so Sprout Tower consists of seven trainers and they all have bell sprouts. So, my training strat is, I've got my, and they're also all level 3 as well, just a really, really, well, for a long, for a while. Uh, it's a rather repetitive dungeon, I believe. In Crystal, they changed some of the, some of the loadouts on these trainers. Uh, but for the moment, it's, it's gonna be this. Uh, that being said, even though they're only level 3, it's a good training spot because trainers give you 50% more experience than wild Pokemon, so it's worthwhile. It's just, it's worthwhile while I'm using Leech Life and I realize I'm going to be having to use Struggle well earlier into this fight than I probably should. Yeah, this is going to be quite entertaining, so... Ah, uh, that's okay. I mean, that, that's what this early game is. This early game is a lot of just, like... Gaining some interest into the game. I, I honestly do feel like the Sprout Tower is a bit of a slog, like... It gets you there, but yeah, it legit, like, takes its time. It's a good purpose, though, because, again, like, it gets you really thinking about your type effectiveness. Obviously, um, like, you can't come in this with the same types as what you would go into the gym. You'd have to, you have to change your strat for this tower. And being able to do both of them side by side is actually quite... Um, interesting in that regard, because what's the gym leaders? Like, one guy's got a level 9 Sparrow, another guy's got two level 7 Pidgeys. It's an interesting kind of composition, because you don't necessarily... And even then, he maxes out level 9 in his Pidgeotto. Meanwhile, the guy at the top of this tower has level 10 Hoodoo. Like, they go at it. Bad bad has no more moves left. Time to struggle, but struggle is a strong attack. So... Thank you, Rocky. Alright, once, once Babat starts getting a little higher up on the attacks, uh, uh, let's switch back to 
Rocky for a moment. Let's get him a bit more experience. I don't think I can particularly wing using Struggle that much, can I? Who knows? Let's see. I love Lefty as Zubat. Don't you? I've got no more moves left. Time to struggle. What level does Zubat, like, learn anything useful? It's like, legit, if he's nailing this guy with struggle, maybe that's the strat. That's the real strat. Let's get Zubat to <laughs> hit himself. Because he'll hit the opponent so much better than anything else. Uh, he learns Supersonic at level 6, Bind at level 12. Which means I have to wing Leech Life for this long. Or I can teach him another attack, but I don't know. Ah, uh, that's okay. I can always run back. Uh, Sprout Tower also has the joys of, uh... Wild Pokemon, uh, which in at nighttime, interestingly, you will have Gastly's appear, and Gastly is Gastly's in a bit of a weird spot because like, when do you, when should you be able to like? Sorry, when does Gastly like serve a decent purpose, like as part of the single player experience of the game? I feel like he takes his time before he really like shines through. Knows. Uh, and it's 85% for Ghastly as well. It's quite interesting just playing this game at night time. Because, yeah, during my last play, I was like, it was Rattata all the time. But here we go, Ghastly. Speaking of Ghastly, uh, anyone watch the F1 race? Wonderful segue. I've, I've been holding onto it for like a year. <laughs> uh, legit? Like, okay, alright, alright. Mild F1 spoilers, but like, it was the race this morning, so. Well, this morning for me, it was probably, probably started just under 24 hours ago, like, yeah. Uh, I know Leclerc, like, did a tremendously good drive, but like, wow, like, he took out two wings, bro. No, he took out his own wing and he took his, Gasly's, uh, rear tire, like, that was, that's, that's a bit rough. Uh, and then, and then taking out... Kimmy's front wing, like, I mean, yeah, pulled in a gnarly, like, push up the ranks off a, an early pit stop like that. Although it was, you know, kind of his fault to go into that early pit stop. Um, but like, man, you know? And then, yeah, Rip Gasly, he's got taken out of the race, like, really early on, and you can't really blame, well, you can blame the player a bit, but... You know, not enough to penalize him out of the race, and honestly, it was a bit of a freak accident. Um, and then, uh... I'm a little sad about uh, George Russell, like, having to retire. Like, his car just couldn't couldn't maintain it for the duration of the race. Other than that, it seemed like a reasonably alright race near the, the midfield. I liked the, the battle... Um, like, Lando Norris is like still crazy good driving. Like, I don't know how. But, like, he just absolutely pulls through. Every single week this year so far, he's just been, like, just consistent as, you know, under under the Mercedes, under the Red Bull, but it's crazy good, so. I'm so bummed about Danny Rick not really getting that tremendously good a spot. Uh, partially in qualifying, and then partially just, you know, Dropping low, but okay. Uh, who else ended near the top? Alonzo did look pretty alright. Sucked the health out of that Bell Sprout. Uh, yeah, I definitely think the top of the stack was not as fun as it probably could be. Oh, uh, signs and yeah, signs and McClure pushing up to six and seven. Stroll getting eight was pretty right. Oh, and Yuki Tsunoda also getting ten. Yeah, yeah. So, it's not the worst race this season. Uh, less exciting than some of the other ones, but 
you know, I, I feel like they've done a, a decent job in building a bit of that drama. Um, and honestly, like, you know, if there's one track that they're gonna do two races at, Red Bull Ring's pretty alright. Uh, although I would, I would love a reverse race, but I know that, um, what, what is turn one and what would be the last turn, absolute killer when you're going backwards, because you're going downhill so fast. Um, yeah, let's just spam Leech Life some more. I'm level 6 now, I should be able to do a bit more damage. A little bit more. Jeez. We got there, but... No, it was really exciting. Uh, if anyone watched the race, it was good stuff. Uh, and... Yeah. Yeah. I actually, I've, I've uh, gotten into watching all the, um, the Sky Sports, like, extra features that they've got as well, and... I don't know, it's just really good, like, kind of hearing, like, the drivers break down, like, a lap time or stuff like that. I don't know, that stuff's actually kind of interesting for me. So, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the rest of the season, although I'm curious if we're at this point where uh, the the trend is set. It seems that the Saturn's, like, pretty killer, um, and right now the Red Bull car is... I'd say better on average than the Mercedes one, and I'm not really too sure how. Could be a planning for next year kind of thing. Um, it's also going to be actually really interesting for Red Bull, considering that they're not even going to have the Honda engines for next year. Um, but, you know, we'll see. So, let me go back to Pokemon for a moment, and let me talk about some of the tremendous things that I love about this game. First of all, uh, I know I'm playing Pokemon Gold, but Pokemon Crystal, the kind of enhanced version of this game, has animated uh, sprites. When the Pokemon comes out to battle, they uh, do a little two-sprite animation. Uh, nothing too fancy, but it's, it's good fun. Gives a bit of character and something that was missing from Ruby Sapphire. Um, the next game in the franchise. They went back to an emerald, they kept it up uh, since, and, and at least in a very consistent way, but it was interesting that like this game did that feature, as well as uh, also uh, letting you pick a female option um, for your main character. Um, but like, yeah, there's actually a lot of a lot of features that this game just threw in and then didn't end up in Ruby Sapphire and then kind of floated around here and there. Pokemon's a bit of an interesting franchise because it's had that up and down experience of like what each game implemented. I realize this is going to be even harder to get to struggle because I have to use Supersonic. Supersonic doesn't hit all the time. In fact, I think it hits only 55% of the time, but... Shouldn't be too bad to get myself to a state where that happens. Maybe I'm more likely to kill my opponent by just using Supersonic all the time. I wonder if I can wing the next fight like that as well. Let's go for it. But I absolutely love, like, you know, like the day-night um, cycle just in terms of a visual experience as well. Like, it's just really good fun just uh, experiencing the game in two different kinds of modes. I know there's a lot of other <laughs> Game Boy games that do that. Mario Land 3 is a vote. Um, there's bound to be other ones. Like, Link to the Past exists, so it's hard to... Hard to rule... Ocarina of Time existed at this point, actually. Majora's Mask came out the same year. This came out in 2000. This is... rather recent. Pokemon's not that old a franchise. That's a, that's a crazy thing as well. Um... I guess it's kind of odd, but... But yeah, no, the weird thing about Pokemon games is just, like, them going kind of back on various features and other things that they've implemented. Um, and, like, there's one thing to, you know, go, oh, well, games are unique. Like, you know, you can't, you can't just go, oh, like, you know, they had the bug-catching contest in this game and then they decided for Ruby Sapphire to not have a, de uh, a day of the week feature, so therefore there's not really any huge way to know it beyond, um, you know, like, like, stuff like that. I guess it's that, but, I don't know, I find it's just a little interesting that they don't, um, particularly, 
Like, I guess Sword and Shield is a perfect example. Uh, that's just, um... You know, they, they went in with the whole uh, Zed move thing in Sun and Moon, they decided to not do that at all. Uh, they had the Mega Evolutions, they decided to ditch those, they've got their own Gigant Gigantamax things. Um, like, there's definitely... Is this the first one, by the way? This one's giving me a bit of trouble already. Uh, they got that Gigantamax business. Um, what else from 5th gen? 5th gen had, like, rotation battles and stuff. Uh, like, it had the triple battles, and I believe triple battles still exist in some capacity in uh, Sword and Shield, but the, the rotation battles, nah, nah, not in there anymore. Um, well, maybe they are, and it's just I've, I've not seen it be played. Maybe it is in there. Yeah, no, it, it just kind of feels that there's a lot of, um... Yeah, there's a lot of features that they they implement, and then they just don't really carry over into any other games. Now the bell sprout's struggling me. Should I be awfully concerned about that? I should be. I'm sending out Bad Bad for one turn, and I'm switching to... to Chicky. <laughs> I don't trust the rest of this fight at all. Crazy. Uh... So... Oh my gosh. This is the king of stalling fights right here. He's still only a level 3. This is the third of... Granted, this is the, the third out of the three... Uh... Trainers that have three level three bell sprouts, so it's it's not gonna get any any worse th than, than that. <sighs> I'm dying a bit on the inside. I'm dying a bit on the inside because you know that Pokemon manually saves, and I didn't manually save. Ah. Is that? I feel like that's gonna be a very awkward end stream right there. That is gonna be a very awkward end stream, isn't it? What? They've got Pokemon music playing now. Oh my gosh. I'm kicking myself a bit. I am actually rather kicking myself because. Oh, yeah, that's how is it. Alright, how about... How about... Oh, uh, it's gonna be awkwardly cut short stream. Alright, how about for next stream... I'll put myself back at that very position. And I'll just continue from there. Or maybe I'll find some time in the week to play another... 40 minutes. Because, legit, that was an hour of stream content that was recorded, put out, and I don't have to save to back it up. Nice. Nice. Good stuff. Alright. So, for those of you who are new watching me, uh, sometimes my controller cuts out. When it does, RetroArch decides to crash. Oh, that hurts. The other times that's happened, it's like there's been a save. There's been at least like something saving my progress. Yeah, not Pokemon. Not Pokemon. So. Well, that's a bit awkward. Oh well. Well, in that case, I would like to thank you all for watching. I 100% apologize for the stream coming to a very abrupt end like that, but I will resolve things later on. Uh, man, that's a very awkward way to end the stream. Probably the most crash landing stream ending that I've got. So, if you're on Twitch, give me a follow on YouTube, uh, give me a subscribe, just so you can see that I am doing more stuff, and who knows, I'll probably actually drop like a miniature thing halfway in the week, we'll see. Um, hopefully those Earthbound videos come back, and I can then 
live with the f uh, well, continue doing that and upload those videos to YouTube without any fear of those videos being taken down in your region of choice. Uh, but other than that, please stay safe, stay well, and don't forget to save early, save often, and buy a new micro USB cable for your Xbox controller.